What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Second video for the day. This video is gonna be more about looking at the week ahead. Uh, the last video that we did put out guys had a quick cut example of market manipulation, how it can definitely move stocks up and down and what the results of them can be if you do get lucky. Of course, a quick reminder to anybody out there looking for more information on trading guys. We do have a free discord for the next two weeks. Link in the description below. On Friday, we did catch the largest move of the year so far. I do think we have an opportunity to catch one more 10,000% play. Of course, we will sign it all the way down here but that won't be for another about week and a half i am looking at a few of the names here but that being said an amazing week first week for those of you guys who did join last week we had ourselves google for 135 we had ourselves the Qs and spy for 95 percent we did have ourselves a red day on thursday that being said came right back again with a wonderful 82 percent play in the morning with microsoft fall by a four thousand percent play in the afternoon with tesla let's kick off this week right guys with a quick weekly review a few different setups here and of course gamestop's also making some changes they're so close yet so far away what does it mean where's ryan cohen we'll get to that later on in the video let's get into this guys if you haven't yet of course smash the like button engage the video let's take a look at the spy right now so the spy having one of the biggest pullbacks we saw here on the market um just on thursday it was only down 1.2 percent to be honest it did feel more dramatic since it did gap up and pull back down roughly 10 points roughly 2.2 percent from top to bottom but overall only 1.1 percent red day and then it did recover basically all of that that it did lose on thursday not from top to bottom, but just from the open and close on Friday. Now, what I'm looking at from the SPY is, can we maintain above this 518 level? Can we continue to use this 518 level as a level of support, really recovering? Because if this sell-off is anything along the lines of what we saw, and I did this, I showed you guys this last week, what we saw all the way back here in July, like this does not mean that the market is over. This could mean that the market sees a little bit of a pullback here, like we saw at the bottom of that day in July, Let's just take a look here. At the bottom of the day in July, we saw a pullback from the market of roughly 9%. From there, the market ripped up, as you guys all witness here, from October to now, you know, basically 28%, almost 30%. So one step back, three steps forward, if you will. Could this be the indication that we could be seeing our first one step back? This week, we have ourselves some pretty important data. I really did trim it down to highlight the important ones. Wednesday is going to be the important day in the market. We have CPI data coming out, guys. As you guys can see here, we have core CPI, CPI month over month, CPI year over year. Following that, we have ourselves crude oil, and then we have ourselves the FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. that day. We have ourselves a jam-packed day on Wednesday day really data heavy so that's gonna be an important part to watch following that we have the initial jobless claims and then ppi on thursday so this week is going to be huge right it's going to be huge because we're seeing a pivot a potential pivotal point in the market on top of that we're going to have some data that can really send this market in either direction so we're until wednesday at market open, I'm not really gonna, actually, you know, until Wednesday after the opening session, we're really not gonna know which direction the market's gonna go. So leading up to those days, please do keep your eyes peeled for an indication of market sentiment, an indication of what names are moving strong, an indication of how the SPY is pricing in potential top or bottoms. I'll get to that on the Tuesday video after you do see how the market looks on Monday. But uh, let's get to a few of the names here and then I wanna cover what happened with GameStop recently. Right now, we are looking at Tesla that had a wonderful whipsaw on Thursday. Now, I'm looking at this from two perspectives, both bullish and bearish. Let's just cover both so we can get an understanding for what could be ahead, right? One, if we do get a weekly close over this 173 level here, right? A weekly close over this zone here. I would love to see a weekly close over that level there, come back down and use that support to then go long back up towards this 187 gap fill that still has not been filled yet. Just short term, that's what I'd be looking for here, right? A nice little W like this would be amazing. If we can get a break over that, come back down and use that support again, of course, I'll be looking for more upside. But at this point in time, right now, if we can get a weekly close over 173.70, I'll be looking to push back up towards that gap on the upside. That being said, okay, if at any point in time we do lose these 52-week lows with Tesla, you have to start looking back at this 154 to 146 gap fill all the way on the downside that was left from all the way back here in January 2023. That gap has just simply never been filled and it is acting like a magnet for this name here. As you guys can see here, it pulled back down towards this gap all the way back in April 2023 before going on that euphoric run all the way up towards the top that we've seen here over the last few years here. And now we are back here again, just knocking at that door. Now we have double bottomed. We 
have seen the exact same low here back to back weeks. But if we break down below that level of demand, that support level, the level where buyers should be standing, you have to start looking at that gap fill down to 154, down to 146, and then we'll see what happens from there, right? So we have both bullish and bearish perspective. Let's keep it moving here. Of course, if you guys have not yet, smash the like button, engage the video. We're gonna keep going through here. The, the Bitcoin look right now is amazing as we're heading towards the halving. I can't see this consolidation. Oh, my apologies for that. I can't see this consolidation really continuing along this trend here all the way until April 20th, right? Now that is in around this time period right here. This is when the market is gonna really show us how much this cut of demand, sorry, this cut of supply is gonna overall affect the demand. As demand's increasing, the supply is literally gonna be cut in half. What happens with Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, is we see this thing give us one little huh, 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 and then give us a little huh. Okay, I am looking for more upside coming in here with Bitcoin, but I do think there will be a shakeout, a fake out, or a rug pull like action before we do see that upside. Perfect example. When we did get Bitcoin um, getting approved for the market, right? We saw some nasty price action, right? We saw some absolutely incredible price action here, right? Look at this. We saw Bitcoin get approved. We saw it rip up to 49,000 all the way over here. Then we saw pull back down all the way here towards 38,000. Then we saw this thing rip back up towards all time highs. Okay. Now, if this was the approval of Wall Street, I'm not saying it has to work that way. I'm not saying it has to be the same because fundamentally there's just two completely different events. But I can definitely see this type of action maybe having happening in a faster time period. Maybe instead of it happening over three weeks, it's over a day or a few hours here. But the way that Bitcoin moves, we could definitely see there being some sketchy action here. So please be careful the closer we get towards having. I do think there's gonna be substantially more upside, but of course, do your own research, not financial advice, all that good stuff. Let's keep it going, guys. Okay. On to some names here that could look good here short term. Okay, as we're looking at Bitcoin really consolidating in this wedge here, you could see a potential for Bitcoin to get rejected from the top of this, this uh, resistance here and come back down towards support. If that is the case, I will be looking for coins to come back down towards this gap fill at around this 210 level. On to the next one, SNDL, cannabis, also looking pretty good right now. Now, over the past uh, few days here, Canvas has pulled back a significant amount here across the board with a few different names here. Uh, on Friday, we saw Cron down 2%, SNDL down 3%, Tilbury down 3% as well. MSOS, the overall uh, cannabis ETF, looked pretty good, up 6%. CGC also up 4%. So there were definitely some strong names here. But after a pullback of roughly 9% on uh, with with Tilray, sorry, with SNDL on Thursday, and then a pullback of 3% on Friday, this is kind of what you're looking for if you want to see an entry, okay? I could see SNDL pushing back up towards that 263 to 270 region here early in this week after coming back down to retest this 90 MA and also come back down to retest a key level of resistance, okay? If you're ever going to jump into anything, in my personal opinion, I don't want to chase it, right? If I see a nice move, I want to wait for that pullback. I want to wait for the IVs to cool off a little bit on those option contracts. I want to wait for people to be less interested because then you can get into a long position for much cheaper. And when the interest does come back in and the overall stock name starts moving, you could start selling instead of buying into that hype, okay? My personal opinion here, I do like SNDL long this week. If it can hold above this 9 EMA, huge caveat, I would love to take some shots here. So this is going to be a name to focus for me. Also, last but not least, guys, before we get into GameStop, I am looking at Disney. They are just going to invest $60 billion more dollars into their company, mainly specifically for their parks, their theme parks. They seem to be the, the biggest draw, so they want to make sure that that you know, remains the standard, and they want to invest and see all the new improvements in regards to AI, robotics, theme parks, rides, who knows what. This, to me, is poised to get back up to 130, 130. I do like the daily volume profile right now. I didn't like this huge sell here that we saw on Wednesday, to be honest, but I do like the fact that we saw a lot of buying stepping in here we've seen a few days here of selling a few a few little pullback days here and it's slowly starting to dry up with volume i'm looking for more of that up, upside towards that 126 125 level here and then i'll be looking for 130 after that some of the names i am looking at for so far for this week guys tesla coin SNDL, disney for those of you guys from the discord you will have a much thorough breakdown and a few a plus setups post later on tonight stay tuned for that i got you guys and then last but not least guys do not forget boeing still sucks <laughs> Just to be clear, Boeing still sucks, okay? Uh, Southwest Boeing 737 lost their engine cover during takeoff. The FAA, FAA is investigating. I know what you're investigating. You're investigating a criminal, criminal, criminal company here. Now, here's a d decent update here with GameStop, okay? GameStop trims their chief offering officer in latest executive shakeup. It seems like Ryan Cohen 
Ryan Cohen is destined to make the best moves for GameStop, clean house from everybody who's you know basically dead weight, and make this thing a slim trim update. Now, of course, fundamentally speaking, their their Q uh, four updates that they just released in Q one were not the greatest. That being said, I do think they are still making moves to make sure the company does well over the long term. Do not forget, they also do have a fund that Ryan Cohen is responsible for and running. Very interested to see how that fund works out because that could definitely be one of the most profitable aspects of that company over the next few quarters, okay? Ryan Cohen also tweeted out the same day that that news came out, so near yet so far. He also tweeted about Qtis, but it does seem like he's trying to make all the right moves to really make sure the bottom line of this company, GameStop, is secure, okay? Um, guys, do not forget, we do have a ton of updates coming up this week in regards to data. So heading into Wednesday, if you're gonna hold anything overnight, please make sure you can afford to lose it. Please make sure you can afford, afford to hold it and be safe in this market, right? Guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the second video of the day. If you guys did not watch the first one, go back and watch it. If you want to live share with us, guys, link in the description below. The Discord is open until the end of the week or until spots are full. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Much love.